Hey y'all, Francis from What a Hell of a Way to Die here. If you've been enjoying the show without being inundated with ads for underwear or mail order mattresses, please consider signing up for the Patreon, where we have seven years of extra episodes, often three or four extra a month. You can get access to everything for five bucks, and it includes it getting into our Discord server as well. This week, we're releasing one of the bonus episodes from last year to give you a taste of what you might be missing out on. We also have a $10 level, which gets you a care package sent three times a year with patches, stickers, pins, anything that I might be curating or have come up with to, to send out. So you can find all of that patreon.com slash hell of a way to die. We also have an online store at hell of a way to die.com, which is always being updated with new stickers, pins, patches, and other odds and ends that you might like. Sign up today. Get me a little bit closer to our Patreon goal where I start to actively work on building a technical in my own backyard. Glory, glory, what a hell of a way to die. Glory, glory, what a hell of a way to die. Glory, glory, what a hell of a way to die. He ain't gonna jump no more. So Pokemon or Magic the Gathering, all these things are fundamentally different. So here's the thing, I had an ex actually, who uh, she was really into Magic the Gathering um, when she was young. I mean, we were in our early 20s, but she's like, oh, I play Magic the Gathering all the time. And I was like, that's confusing because um, you're attractive uh, and normal. So I don't know. Yeah, I uh, play Magic she, the Gathering and I am disgusting. So yeah, attract. Yeah. So, right. Which is what I would normally expect. And uh, she found all of her, like she had one of those big long boxes with all the Magic cards and shit in it. And uh She's like, tries, she's like, oh yeah, we can. I can teach you how to play. And I was just like, will you be offended if I say that I don't want to do this? And she's like, nope, totally understand. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> then you broke up. <laughs> no, then she started cheating on me with another woman. Yeah, it's because you didn't. I bet she played magic cards. Yeah, <laughs> they played something. I'm sure. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to a podcast. As I uh, <laughs> lay open all of my uh, my my unnecessary things. <laughs> It's me. It's Francis. It's uh, Joe and Carrie. Gentlemen, uh, how, how are you doing tonight? Um, well, first of all, I need to address something. We, before we started this podcast, oh God. Uh, I said something about Yu-Gi-Oh! And you're like, they're all the same. I tried to play that once. And then you started talking about Magic the Gathering, which is well, not the same. They're all, they're all the same thing. Like, yeah. I'm starting to doubt your faith in the heart of the cards, Francis. I don't know if this relationship can continue. <laughs> Okay, look, I I respect everybody and their weird habits. Uh, the I things do not. That they, the things that they like to do, uh, whatever whatever floats your boat is my thing. Just uh, don't ask me to come to your weird tournaments, all right? And smell whatever it is, because I know it smells crazy in there. It does smell crazy in there. Like it smells real crazy in there. It's one of the best things that's ever happened in the history of the internet is the guy who went and posed in front of everybody's <laughs> ass cracks at the magic tournament everybody, and got banned for life from magic. Everybody was so mad. And that, to be fair, that guy was kind of a dick, but also that's very funny. Oh, that's very funny because the guy was like a high ranking tournament, uh, tournament member as well. Like he wasn't just some hater that floated mm. in and made fun of everybody's butthole. Uh, which I mean, I wouldn't judge him for that either. Like he was, he was trying to make a point of how disgusting we all are, and you need to fix it. Yeah, I and love as, pants, guys. I, I played magic tournaments when I was in school uh, at like the local card shop, and yeah, man, it was fucking. Dis- it smelled like balls and weed, and like, mm. but also it could have been like a stench of unwashed asshole. It just smelled skunky. It's hard to tell. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, gentlemen, I brought you here today to talk about dueling, uh, and that's why we were talking about Yu-Gi-Oh for some fucking reason. Because <laughs> Joe wanted to talk duel, about motherfucker. That's Joe wanted to talk nerd about some right nerd shit. This is how we get fired from a podcast. <laughs> I can hear Joe's virginity growing back as he talks about <laughs> fucking <laughs> it's, it's healing over like a scab. <laughs> 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 oh, so it's not, it's not, not only do you have to deal with nerd shit, but now you're going to be a scab? What the fuck, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Just slowly turning into a 4chan incel, too. <laughs> Healing to my uh, to my desk chair from unwashed sweat and Yu-Gi-Oh oh. stains. Ugh. All right. Look, <laughs> well, well, Yu-Gi-Oh stain is, get, but it sounds look, horrible. I can't talk too much shit because I play Dungeons and Dragons and that is its own um, smell yeah. of weed and, and ass. Glass so. houses, motherfucker. Glass yeah, houses. I, you know what? I play over the internet, though, so the only ass smell is my own, which I'm already <laughs> used to, so it's okay. 
I mean, the technology has certainly caught up with Magic. You can play Magic the Gathering uh, Arena and you don't have to see or even speak to anybody because there's no voice chat. It's, um, it's amazing. <laughs> now, I play I, my, my Dungeons and Dragons group sometimes gets together in barbecues. Um, but other than that, you know, we uh, are I'm not going to say are you barbecuing but, you know, dragons. No, uh, chicken. What a nice succulent slice of dragon sirloin. Like that's kind of fucked Francis. Up, that's a that's a steak. That's Shut a pork, up. It's a pork <laughs> steak. No, uh, I, look, pork I, steak. Boom, boom. Hey, you know what? I can get a shitload of pork steaks for ten bucks, and in, in this economy, that's that's, uh, that, that's, that's the just, way to go. That's just pork. Like it's kind of like like I don't know. My local grocery store started advertising like you know sirloin pork tips, and it's like no, <laughs> no, that's, that's sirloin. That's just that's just chopped up pork. Like let's, I try let's to fancy it up a bit. Yeah, like I always you know, make sure to harvest long pig whenever I go into town. <laughs> Which, <laughs> all right, so we got Army Hammer on the fucking podcast. The, the longest, <laughs> most succulent pig. <laughs> no, no, it's yeah, I got different. a I got a long I got a long hog for you to chew on. <laughs> I I also don't want to play with your deck. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want me to slap my meat on your grill. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so dueling. Um, <laughs> did you guys know? Did you guys know it is illegal in the UCMJ to uh, to have a duel? Um, I, you, I you do can. know that because I uh, I hated several of the petty officers that I had to serve under, and I looked it up. I like yeah. that this was such a problem. We had to make a rule of it, just in case. Well, it's it's one of those things where I like mean, I, I would have shot started- a motherfucker. In the 1800s, it started to kind of go out of fat. Like dueling in general started going out of fashion, and I don't know why. Like maybe we stopped eating lead as much. Um, uh, not maybe we started- America. I'll, yeah. I'll shoot. Maybe it's because pistols got slightly better, so dueling was just not dueling; it was just shooting a guy in the chest. Right? Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, it kind of took the element of chance out of it. Like you didn't have like you know you're going to shoot the other guy, and like maybe like a mini ball like goes through his shoulder, but like maybe just hits a tree behind him. Who knows? Like. Instead, it's just you're going to be real fucking dead quick. Like, dueling just, just get shot in the fucking face. Like, oh, well, that was easy. I went first. Well, yeah. I was going to say, because like dueling just kind of became like, you know, like, uh, like showdowns in like the old West. Like you just like, you know, you're going to plug the guy across from you. I yeah. challenge you to a duel. We're going to meet in my and like in my driveway with Glock 19s. <laughs> 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 just gunning each other down. Yeah, the pistols of uh, of yore, like and we're talking early like late 17 early 1800s, smooth bore, flintlock, uh one one shot kind of thing. So like and you know a lot of people would do they'd be like, "Yeah, I'll do a duel." And they both just shoot the gun up in the air cuz they're just like, well, "We have to do the thing where we um you know, show that we're still manly and shit, but also I don't actually want to kill you, so I'm going to shoot the gun in the air. Like that happened a lot of times. Also, uh, what happened a lot of times? About dueling, point break. Yeah. Uh, also, <laughs> what happened? What What happened a lot of times is one guy would shoot up in the air, and the other guy would be like, "Cool," and then just shoot the fucker. Yeah, uh, that's what I like, would do. Like you stupid yeah. bitch, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you silly motherfucker. Good job, dumbass. I'm gonna fucking shoot the shit out of you. So yeah, article article one one four endangerment uh, endangerment offenses. Reckless endangerment uh, is any person subjected to this chapter who engages in conduct that is wrongful and reckless, or is wanton and is likely pr- to produce death, grievous body harm, or or grievous body harm to uh, another person, which. This first off reading this is just like, I understand that this is specifically about dueling, but I have done many things in the army that was wrongful, reckless, and could have produced death uh, in in any manner of, of, of speaking. Um, I think that's just part of the occupation. Yeah, I mean, that's code. just like, that's just generally okay. negligent homicide. Uh, okay. Like, I'm not I talking te- about I technically dueled while in the army, though. It was paintball guns. See, that's okay. That's not, you know, to produce death or grievous body harm. We were just... wearing masks and we okay, shot each well, other in the face. <laughs> yeah, well, see that? Yes. Now, now you're illegal and I um, expect you to turn yourself into Fort Leavenworth uh, by the end of the week. Now, um, so, so uh, shooting each other obviously is, is no good. Um, dueling, uh, which is any person... Uh, Punished by court martial, uh, dueling is any person subject to this chapter one who fights or promotes or is concerned or uh, concerned in or connives at fighting duel or two who have knowledge of a challenge sent uh, to or, or about to be sent fails to report the facts uh, promptly and to to the proper authority. So, uh, okay, I counter with, um, sir, it was rad as fuck. Of course, I didn't write on them. <laughs> 
So these two men got on bicycles and got lances and decided to drive to pedal at each other at full speed like a couple of. I mean, that's we talked about about recently. I mean, that's just a Saturday night of the barracks. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I've like, done the same thing a... in desk chairs. Yeah. <laughs> so the lances were just like brooms. Yeah, you get you get the and see that's how you get around it, is they're rounded off. As soon as you Wait, as soon as you whittle that down. Lances? Well, no, I'm saying that this is <laughs> who do you think is doing this? <laughs> I don't know. Look, we'll get you into some fucked up example. No, I I I we will get to some fucked up examples. But you know, the military itself has a long history of uh of dueling. In fact, uh so this quote from an article I found it says between 1798 and the Civil War, the Navy lost two thirds as many officers to officers to dueling as it did to more than sixty years of combat at sea. <laughs> so, Fuck yeah. It's gotta be boredom, man. Being in the Navy back then, it has to be boring as shit. Like well, many of Many I mean, of those killed and maimed were teenage midshipmen and barely older junior officers, casualties of their own reckless judgment, and at least on one occasion, the by-the-book priggishness of some of their shipmates. Which, I get it. This is, why, this is why there's a rule against dueling, because as Carrie said, there have been many a people in the army that I've just wanted to shoot in the fucking face. Oh yeah, like they there was to a- agree to it, otherwise it's just murder. As I was, uh, as I've expressed previously, I believe even on this podcast, I almost, uh, like came to blows with a different E five for each year that I was in, uh, and I <laughs> yeah, and I, I agree with that. And I yeah. want and I one hundred percent would have like probably dueled them at like a particular point, uh, particularly like the uh, the one uh, the motherfucker with a mustache who almost crushed me with a buoy. Like I one hundred percent would have like gone ten paces with him and tried to shoot him in his dumb fucking face. I think an important part of the dueling scenario is they're like, I challenge you to a duel, and they're like. Okay, it's not like I challenge you to a duel and you fucking kneecap him. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's actually called the Irish duel. Uh, yeah, why why is he slowly walking ten paces from me? What's ow? God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking noob! <laughs> you just threw a gun at me and ran the other direction for really quick and shot me. <laughs> that's why I carry two handguns on me at all times. So when someone cuts me off in traffic, I simply roll the window down and throw the gun across the highway, and then you well, can just what? proceed to open fire as long as you're in Florida. Well, what we do, what we got to do is like in uh, Romeo and Juliet, the 95 movie with DiCaprio. Do you remember the scene where yeah, like, they're swords? They're not guns. It's fine. No, but th- but they're in the movie. They are guns. And I know, but they're called like sword nine millimeter. Yeah. And dagger. But they to duel with the guns. They end up they um, unload the magazine and only put one bullet in. Uh, so, you know, you've got a little bit more accurate, but you get one shot and that's about it. That's all you need. It's a modern pistol. Look, yeah, look, motherfucker, you have shot a pistol. There's things at, at a far enough distance. Ten get paces? Tw- <laughs> I, come on. Ten pa- okay, hold on. Ten paces. If you've got a two foot pace and that's so it's, uh, 20, 40 feet, uh, if both of you are walking, 40 feet. Yeah, look, I'm just saying, if you're shooting with iron sights, you're going to have to take a second to line it up if you only got one bullet. Yeah, but you still can shoot them. Yeah. It's not like it's a smooth bore pistol with a musket ball that's going to arc wildly off to the side. They, yeah, but they also took you're time not... to aim those too. You, if you give someone like if you give two people M9s and one, well, you might not get a dead guy, but you'll certainly get a guy with a bullet wound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like if somebody be, knows. Look, I, I had to qualify on an M9 and it took me four times, so not necessarily. I had to, it was my it was, it was my primary weapon system as a tank crewman. I had to qualify with it every fucking time I went to the range. It is not hard. It's a stupid proof weapon. I, if you, look, they handed it to me, and I was real fucking stupid with it. All right, I don't. I, they hand. So here's the thing. It was my it was my primary weapon when I went to Afghanistan in 04, and I had literally never shot a pistol in my entire life at that point. Like I had only ever shot rifles. Uh, so they handed this to me, and I was just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. They're like, well, it's like a rifle. You just line up the sights and you pull the trigger. And I said, cool. It's and not then entirely it took me wrong. Time. I mean, but somehow it's still like a fucking M16, man. I'll knock down target to 300 meters, no problem. But a pistol, it's not up on my shoulder. It was a whole like, it's a whole different way of shooting that nobody taught me. And they're just like, nah, just go out to the range and fucking throw some rounds down range and uh, you'll figure it out, I guess. And I mean, I did. I did qualify with it eventually. They let me go to Afghanistan with it. So you're saying that if you, if you dueled yourself, 
to, to everybody to walk away perfectly fine. <laughs> Back in 2004, I own a pistol now. I'm a little bit better with it, slightly, but you know, still, I'm also like terrified of my own of my own death. So it'd be a lot of like, you know, ten paces and then me crouching down and crying a little bit, maybe. I think that's like that's more of the point of the duel than like murder is showing how manly you're supposed to be is like you're right. still stand in front of someone while they shoot at you. But that loses some of its appeal when you're just using a modern pistol. Like <laughs> when you're you when you're using like uh, I don't know the fucking a bird blaster 6000 from that like existed in the 1800s or whatever. Like yeah, we'll do, you, you could probably live. We'll do We'll do punt guns at a hundred paces. <laughs> like even just like your, you know, your powder doesn't go off or something. You know what I mean? Like or you know the fucking like uh like back in the day the fucking wick on your pistol like you know the fucking burns out or something. You know like there were definitely like other ways. Like even if you know you're not great at shooting a pistol, you you're definitely more likely to do some fucking damage with you know a modern you know fucking uh, Glock or something than you are with like whatever dumb bullshit is uh you know you were probably carrying around as a naval officer. I mean, also, like, the other thing about it, too, is particularly back then, naval promotions were, I think, a lot were essentially just all about, like, time and grade and when you actually entered the service and when you, like, entered certain ranks. So if you so, dueled I mean, enough people, the I mean, list just, shortens. I mean, I'm just saying it's a new, it was a ancient maritime version of grind set. You know, Starship you should, troopers. You are. Uh, yeah. The, you, the guy you above sh- you die, you get promoted. Yeah. You, you know, you shoot enough guys. Maybe you're the first one to make admiral in your class. You know, who knows? <laughs> you know, there's only one way to find out. Look, I'm just saying if promotion uh, still worked that way, we would have a significantly lower uh, defense expenditure. <laughs> we'd probably have a lot better officers, too. I mean, we'd have a oh, lot of... No, they would, instead of running really fast, you just get a whole bunch of guys who are good firing exactly one bullet from a pistol. <laughs> <laughs> but on the, on See, the positive side, at least then we get uh, fewer dumb PT tests. So, I mean, that, you know, that might be... True. You know. <laughs> I, I and you know I can see like you know your your average E four um, being one of those guys is be like, hey man you got to get up you got fire wash motherfucker let's go out on the field right now ten paces <laughs> fuck or you just, or just you know like uh man uh you know Private Horton's been spending a lot of time down at the range recently uh <laughs> he's wearing a it, top hat and a wool jacket he, he bought did. he bought a very heavy white glove and has been glaring at the co a lot <laughs> see that that's the thing is that's why this is uh like reserved for the officer class because if you let specialists do this it'd be like that episode of the simpsons where homer <laughs> goes around slapping everyone <laughs> just like how bad could it possibly go they're all dead what do you mean they're all dead <laughs> The entire company. The entire company is dead. Like, <laughs> does that, mean, just, does like, that mean I'm admiral now? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody dueled themselves to death. <laughs> They're just like one specialist after like after like a fucking ninety six weekend. You know, just like <laughs> and he has he's several a, bullet wounds himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he, but he only got he only got a couple in the legs, so he's <laughs> fine. He just has to go to sick call for a while. <laughs> I'm fine. You should see everybody else. Going to sick call for chest pains because there's a bullet lodged <laughs> in there. A bad news specialist, your uh, your leave is dis- uh, is still rejected because you killed the commanding officer. <laughs> yeah, oh, so you got you got shot in the leg. You're right on medical now. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so there have been duels, obviously, um, because it's a thing that we have history on. Uh, I want to talk about a couple of famous duels. Um, I'm n- we're not going to talk about Burr and Hamilton because fuck that, it's boring. Um, everybody knows about Burr and Hamilton, but we can talk about Lincoln. Um, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln got jeweled sh- a guy. Oh, oh yeah. I, mean, I know um, he was really into wrestling, uh, but I didn't know he was a duelist. Well, so what kind of deck the, did he run? The blue the eyes, thing. white dragon kind of guy. <laughs> Nerd shit. <laughs> did you see? Did you see recently that an article that there was um, found writing that Lincoln was just like, yeah, I like wrestling, and somebody was like, oh, George Washington didn't really like wrestling too, and he's like, fuck that dude, I'd wrestle him right now. I'll fucking take George Washington. He was undefeated. Uh, yeah. Like Lincoln was Lincoln was like the best bout machine of his era. Fucking I, I, Lincoln because he was so collector. fucking tall. Everybody back then was like five foot four, and that dude was like six foot two. He had yeah. he had reach like nobody else did. <laughs> I'd fight well, plus, him, you know. <laughs> Yeah, what is that? Uh, that's from what's it? This Fight Club. Fight, Fight Club. Club. Yeah, what yeah, president yeah. would you fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't remember who they picked. I think someone picked Lincoln, though. Yeah, one picked Lincoln. Um, I think I'd go with Taft. I think I could take Taft, wear him down. I don't know, real quick. man. Well, who, he, was the, who was the guy who died after like 40 days? 
Cleveland? Grover no, Cleveland? No, it wasn't no, Cleveland. Uh, no, it was like, uh, was it William Harrison? It was Harrison. William Henry Harrison, yeah. Yeah, yeah. take him. Motherfucker I like, was I like your chances. I got inaugurated. Yeah, I could, you take, know? I could take... Um, <laughs> you shoot uh, the double leg and he just turns the dust. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could take Grover Cleveland while he's, you know, uh, getting his boof broth going on. Like I, I'm, I'm shooting for the top. I'm going for the belt. I'm fighting Abraham Lincoln. I mean, Kennedy was kind of a sickly motherfucker. Yeah, he was pretty. He was pretty fucked up. I mean, on top like, of all of his various uh, illnesses, he's also wounded in World War II. Yeah, I was going to say like a lot of drugs. Well, yeah, and like you yeah, know, pro- drugs and pro- pussy. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say it was like riddled with the gonorrhea. Like, wasn't he like you know apocryphally like getting like a fucking like penicillin shot when the I, I was think going he on? was mostly a skin suit full of squirming STDs. <laughs> yeah, that, which is why he was the coolest president. <laughs> I wouldn't want to wrestle him for fear of catching something. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, you hear about like a uh, a fucking syphilis outbreak or whatever in a, a bunch of wrestling uh, things. Like, mm, I don't, don't think you well, guys just are supposed to wrestle like fucking that. one another. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, the, you're doing the wrong kind of wrestling, bros. I I love wrestling, and I know there are a bunch of weird carnies that constantly fuck one another because they're constantly touring and drinking and doing drugs. Which is like, of course, that's what you do. Not to mention all of the the injuries and whatnot. Anyway, me and Lincoln WrestleMania. Wait, what? Who's the president you would least want to fight? Uh, probably Teddy Roosevelt. I was gonna yeah, say. I, I feel good, like it's. I feel like it's a Teddy. knife. Yeah, yeah. One of that, but, there. but like, dude, you ever heard about like when he would like go on his like you know fucking like walks with like his cabinet and shit, and he would have them like swim across rivers and like you know uh like marching through the fucking like countryside and shit around. I mean, DC. the the whole like Teddy Roosevelt manliness thing was kind of a marketing ploy, but yeah. also I I'm more worried that he would just like stab me. Oh yeah, yeah I mean the guy was also yeah he was just tapped. <laughs> as, as, a, as a human being like you know I, I at least it'd be a fight i'd be more worried about like i don't know fighting uh someone who's like kind of gross and slippery <laughs> like, like donald s- trump would be like yeah. fighting a pile of mashed potatoes who's the sweatiest president that's who i don't want to fight that's gotta be that's gotta be taft no yeah. what about uh i mean famously nixon oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why he was. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to fight uh, LBJ because he'd probably like put his. You just dick hit you with his somehow. dick on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he'd just fucking yeah. helicopter you to death. <laughs> Be the first man ever bludgeoned to death with a penis, like from a Clockwork Orange, <laughs> knocked upside the head with nine inches of limp dick. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get your concussion? I don't want to fucking talk about it. I got, I got fucking hit between the eyes of Jumbo. You got a fucking mushroom stamp that you wouldn't believe. <laughs> a mushroom stamp that's been pressed into your skull. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we've got Abraham Lincoln. Uh, he w- he dueled a guy named James Shields. Um, now, it, this is pre-presidency. And I'm going to tell you. Yeah, the he lost st- his duel as president previously. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah nobody, nobody talks about the, the pistol that was dropped in his lap right before he shot. It's like, nope, it counts. It's a duel. It was, uh, yeah, was John that Wilkes was, Booth a cop now? Yeah, J- John Wilkes Booth actually uh, practicing uh, castle doctrine right there. Uh, <laughs> John Wilkes Booth is rapidly being sworn into Capitol Police. <laughs> Wait, no, then Lincoln would have survived because they just wouldn't have shown up. Hey! Hey. (laughs) So uh, the history between these two uh, is that the Illinois, this is pre-Civil War, and I'm not going to get too much into how banking was done back then, but it's absolutely no way the way that banking is Human teeth, mostly. Yeah, I mean, it was gold gold and silver, and uh, you would get paper money that would be you know, it, it, the gold and silver standard was still there. You had regional banks. It's a whole thing. Basically, Illinois teeth, had, like Danhausen. Il, yeah, <laughs> Illinois had no <laughs> Illinois had no money. Um, there were problems going on. So this guy Shields was the state auditor. Uh, he sided with the uh, the Democratic Party to uh, close the bank. There is a whole back and forth. Lincoln started shit talking him in the paper under a uh, under an assumed name. But also had no problems being just like, yeah, I'm the guy who keeps shit talking shields. Fuck that guy. Um, what, what was his a pseudonym? Pseudonyms uh, what, are always so dumb. Like the guy who wrote uh, hate letters about the president during uh, the Civil War that went by fucking Leonidas. Yeah, he went by the name Rebecca. Um, and as Rebecca, right. Lincoln, Lincoln attacked shields for his politics and his personal personal foilables. Uh, assuming the character of an Illinois farmer, Lin- Lincoln wrote, I've been tugging ever since harvest, getting out wheat and hauling it to the river to raise state bank paper enough to pay my taxes here and the little school debt I own. 
And now just as I've got it, lo and behold, I find a set of fellows uh, calling themselves officers of the state, having forbidden to receive state paper at all. And so it is, here it is dead on my hands. Uh, he also s- went after Shields' pursuit of women, saying his features, his very features in the ecstatic agony of his soul spoke audibly and distinctly, quote, dear girls, it is distressing, but I cannot marry you all. Too well I know how much you will all suffer, but do, do remember, it's not my fault that I am so handsome and so interesting. Uh, so yeah, he was shit talking Shields and Shields was finally like, fuck this you, kind motherfucker. Of like shit posting? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, so, uh, there was a place, um, and this is here, like the, the, the duel took place in, not in St. Louis, but near St. Louis. Um, Alton, Illinois is right across the river from us. Uh, Alton has a whole lot of history as like one of the most haunted cities in America because it had a, it had a Confederate prison, um, which, hey Joe, how were, how were confederate prisons not good not good not good yeah um, i mean you also did, like in general too how were most prisons during the civil <laughs> war uh not great it's decidedly bad <laughs> yeah so after the civil war the um the uh the but the the prison was demolished but all the limestone from it was used to like um build foundations from most of the houses in the uh, area so that's haunted <laughs> that's how you get a lot of that's how you get haunted that's how you that's get how real you, haunted that's how you get rock ghosts yeah so uh alton illinois very uh very heavy with the uh uh ghost tours and everything but uh which is why i know a lot of this about lincoln and shields so um lincoln lincoln and shields like you know fuck it let's we're gonna duel so there's technically dueling was illegal but if it, only if it was on like in a state, right? So they found a place called Blood Island, which no longer exists. Um, but Blood Island was an island in on the Mississippi in between uh, Missouri and Illinois. And so Lincoln's like, all right, let's right, we're going to go out there. You and me, we're going to go out there. We're going to duel. We're going to take care of this. So they go out there. And uh, Lincoln, since Shields challenged Lincoln, Lincoln got to choose the weapons. So instead of being like, let's take pistols out there, he picked like the biggest cavalry swords that that they had at the time. And was like, we're going to we're going to sword fight out there. Let's go. Um, so okay, what do I, I have to point out meeting up on blood Island to have a duel is a bit on the nose. Well, I mean, there was a uh, like somewhat fairly common, ba- like I know they used to do like, uh, like bare knuckle boxing matches and shit. Uh, I think Lincoln did those too. Yeah, like probably. Off, off the coast of, uh, like in Boston Harbor, like in the Harbor islands. I think it was also like a thing for like some of the islands off New York too, where it was, you know, back in the day before they really had like municipal government and, uh, it would just be like, Oh, we want to do, uh, Something like vaguely shady. Let's just uh, go offshore a little bit and, you know, set up an old ye old timey international waters and like make a day of it. (laughs) So it it was actually called Bloody Island. Um, So even better. Yeah. So they they went out. um, And uh, as we said, Lincoln, very tall man. Um, So they and this is an island on the Mississippi. It doesn't exist anymore because rivers are moving living things. So it, you know, wasn't exactly a stable chunk of land. The Western rivers like uh, like out with like, you know, like and I only say that because like, you know, uh, it's very different compared to like rivers like out east or something like the Mississippi and like other shit are always like they're always changing. And like even like the way that like, you know, they're administered and the buoys are set and shit like they're just like they're so much more dynamic than like a lot of rivers in other parts of the country. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Mississippi River is just a huge um, uh, uh, commerce uh, traffic and everything like that. And it is always like there are islands that come and go, uh, depending on how high the rivers is. So uh, they went out to, to Bloody Island and they put a plank down and they're like, nobody can p- we're, we're going to fight and nobody can can cross the plank. So there's no there's no like, you know, back and forth sword play like you see in like Princess Bride or whatever. It's just like, uh. no, we're. We're going to, we're just going to fucking, you know, like a knife fight where you tie your hands together, like you tie your, uh, your left hands together and then you have the knife in your right hand and you just stab the shit out of each other. That's kind of what they're going for. Um, so, I, uh, I didn't know people did that. That seems, um, badly thought out. I mean, I guess yeah. nobody could run away then, but whatever. I, you know, um, again, these are, these are people who are willing to duel. And if you asked me to duel, I would just say, simply say, no, thank you. Um, you have, you have I, to tie their cocks together before they knife fight one another. <laughs> hey, I think I saw that in the new Jackass movie. <laughs> 
Uh, so on the day of the duel, no, I'm uh, Abraham Lincoln and welcome to Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what they what they did, they went out there and uh, Lincoln being tall and strong was just kind of like flipping the sword around, looking all cool with it. And then like right when they're about to duel, he just starts cutting down like tree branches right above Shield's heads to make him fall down onto him. And he's just like. Uh, so I made a mistake. I should um, not have challenged <laughs> the gigantic, angry sword guy. Yeah. So uh, they uh, ch- challenged the guy who spent his entire youth, uh, like you know, flipping an axe up in the air and like fucking chopping firewood was like splitting rails was not my best choice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I should have challenged literally any other pasty faced lawyer that was like around to talking shit. Yeah. Shields Shields would have really done well like today because there's a lot of like really pudgy lawyers that could probably do with a dueling. I, that's a dueling. I I, uh, I express no opinion on that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and then and, and so like I said, I went to Alton a lot um, to do the ghost tours around because they're also history tours. One of the stories that they told us about this because there's there's um, uh, statues of uh, Lincoln and Shields. Uh, in Alton that you can go visit. One of the they things together, that they're trying to murder each other with swords. No, I think it's that they're debating or something. Oh, no, oh. no, I'm you sorry. I don't think it's sh- a duel, but a debate by other means. Yeah, no. And I actually, I, I take it back. I don't think it's, um, I don't think it was uh, Shields uh, who's in that. It's Lincoln and whoever he was when he was running for Senator, whoever he was uh, going up against then. I would enjoy debate club a whole lot better if they're just like, all right, enough of this. They whip aside the podiums and start <laughs> sword fighting. I would actually respect to debate people then. I mean, I actually, uh, I, I mean, I encourage anyone to do that now. I would 100% <laughs> love to see like, you know, uh, Marco Rubio and fucking Ted Cruz just like, you know, and like, you know, fucking DeSantis just going at it with like, you know, like, and it, to be clear though, like not like sword giant or anything. rubber fists from no. Borat. <laughs> no, I want, I want them to, you know, like the really shitty, like, uh, assisted opening, uh, knives that you only find at like a head shop or like, you know, like a roadside stand or like a beach kiosk or something. Everybody has to find a, a, a knife that has a personalization of their name on it. Or like, or like it really like, you know, it, it like looks like a gun, but it's actually a knife, but like, you know, whatever, <laughs> or like, uh, or we're like playing a, a game of knifey gunny. Or has, has like a has like a dragon handle or something. Everybody uh, has to order the most obnoxious knife ever for Bud K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's what the rule should be. Like you have to like it has to be an embarrassing thing. So that way, not only if you like kill the guy in front of you, not only is it like back and he's dead, but it's also like, aha, motherfucker, you got caught, you got killed with like I don't know this like flowerly, uh, you know, uh, like green dragon scale fucking. Uh, like butterfly knife or something getting fucking brained with like a recreation of something from Lord of the Rings while someone else is armed with like one of the switchblades. It's also a comb. Yeah. yeah right? I, I, I fully believe <laughs> that if, would be uh, that would be Marco Rubio. I feel dude, it would be the, <laughs> bring back dueling with fantasy swords, like the goofy, like, you know, here's all my not like the ones that is just like, it's a fist punch thing, but it's got blades on it. Like, yeah, those things like, look yeah, that's so Bud cool. K. You could, you could still buy those in that awful fucking magazine to this day. Exactly. Or you can buy them at a kiosk outside of your PX and in some bases that I've seen. You Every know, you Marine can, with a giant broadsword with, with some random Irish crest on it. They insist it's from their family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your name. What's your last name? Like, let me flip through here. Here, here's your family crest. I'll go ahead and. and Did you uh, know you were uh, distant related to a uh, uh, nobility? You and every <laughs> other fucking loser that walks by. <laughs> So one of the stories that they told us is that um, Lincoln and Shields actually, you know, became friends out there. They're like, this is fucking dumb. Let's, you know, uh, bury the hatchet. And they sent a boat back across the Mississippi. Like they both um, stayed on the island and sent one of the uh, rafts back. But like they made it look like there was a bloody like they, they took some blankets or some sheets or something and covered it in something to make it look like blood just to like fuck with the people on just like, here's the dead body that we're sending back. And then there was nobody. Um, so <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Lincoln and shields. Um, you know, a duelist in a, in a sense in that, uh, nobody wanted to duel him because he's really fucking tall and scary. All right. You guys ready for a new, another one? You ready to talk about the French? I got two French duels to talk about. All right, let's, yeah, let's as long as you can, as long as you mispronounce things so people get mad at you. Oh, I will. I I have no. Well, I'm from St. Louis, so like I'm allowed to mispronounce uh, French words. Yeah, that's what you think, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is 1808. 
uh, two Frenchmen, Monsieur de, de Grand Prix and Nailed Monsieur it. de Piqui, Piqui, uh, both had been <laughs> betting Mademoiselle. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. P I Q U E. Piqui? Piqui? P I E I O. <laughs> so they've both been uh, shacking up with uh, Mademoiselle uh, Trivet. Uh, a renowned dancer at the Paris Opera. So both of these guys are into the local stripper uh, and they are not uh, cool with it because she's seen the both of them. And so one of them is just like, the, well, she's just like, look, I will, I can. Uh, yes. I, enlisted man's first duel. I shooting cannot, a guy over the stripper. <laughs> 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 now, Chevette, she she began seeing to peak, uh, uh She was dating one and then started uh, seeing the other one as a side piece. So they decided that uh, the only way that they can deal with this is to have a duel. Um, and she said that she would bestow her smiles upon the survivor. So fucking uh, Miss Crystal Chandelier here uh, knows what she's getting into. And she's really into it. She's like, yes, I want you guys to kill each other over me. She's a very specific fetish that she's been playing the long con to get to. <laughs> Fucking this is this is this is what you know getting laid on a regular basis does to a to a Frenchman. <laughs> she's like, no, 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 I do not want to uh, have sex with either of you. I want you to kill each other. <laughs> now I'll fuck the corpse of you both. <laughs> oh. Unhindered John, swallow the smaller one. <laughs> Well, I'm we gonna got- take you into the drag you into the catacombs myself. <laughs> this is kind of as a joke. Can we get a ruling? This is kind of the uh, the larger corpse infrastructure. Uh, you know, I mean, we've had like we've had corpse piers, we've had corpse seawalls, we've had corpse roads. At this corpse point, boats. we have a whole cor- at this point we have a whole corpse highway system. It's a, it's a it's a cor- it's a logistics system based on corpses. It's, it's yeah, like, it, yeah, it's renewable resources. I be- I believe. And a smaller carbon footprint, which is why I believe building <laughs> things out of dead bodies. <laughs> just, just Vote showing, for me. Showing up to uh like showing up to like a uh like a cyclist like you know rights group or something who's like talking about building bike lanes. <laughs> you just like get up and like hear me out, corpse lanes. <laughs> corpse lanes. Just uh you can ride your bike, it's gonna be a little bumpy, but after a year or so it'll smooth itself out. Comrades, listen to me. See the man to your left. Kill him and lay him down in a <laughs> straight line. All of you guys just lay down and die. Uh, and then we're just going to pile rocks on top of you. Bam. So these two guys uh, decided to uh, to have a duel, but uh, they couldn't just, you know, get some guns or get some swords because they're French and uh, they want to be fancy about it. So they decide that they they're going to no, they're going to duel in balloons. Um, balloons. Oh, fuck yes. D- yes. Balloons. Yes. <laughs> balloons. Very new. Uh, but you know what? They decided that they are going to get into balloons. They can't use pistols. They had to get blunderbusses, which is the <laughs> the precursor to shotguns. Uh, and was the this idea was with- fucking written by Acme. Pretty much. And like, this is, this is what having too much, this is why rich people shouldn't exist. Cause like <laughs> normal people will just shoot each other. But like these guys are like, no, we must get into a balloon and fly up. But also 1808, like what other, what else was going on? Like the only other forms of, in, of entertainment was just like, we're going to make like this, we're going to make 10 dogs fight a bear. Uh, or you can watch <laughs> two dudes shoot each other in balloons. Like that's it. They didn't have fucking Netflix. Gentlemen, I have an idea. It's going to be rad as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be how you say metal. Well, it's like uh, it's like how they used to just like stage train crashes back in the day. Yeah, like, and they still managed to kill people with them. Yeah, because, yeah, because it's like you know they don't like oh it'll be fine, and they just have everyone like fucking crowd the tracks, and it's like oh weird. <laughs> well, uh, no, it's like boiler- little Jimmy gets taken out by a flying fucking wheel. <laughs> the fucking <laughs> the fucking boilers would explode. So yeah. like yeah. You know, you have two trains run into each other and normally it's like, hey, two trains ran into each other. And then like on occasion, the boiler would erupt and you just have like shrapnel over the next quarter mile. Yeah. It's just like, ah, oh, like yeah, going for a fun. Oh, well, and uh, my date lost her head. Uh, that's Sprayed uh, hot boiler juice all over a willing crowd. <laughs> So these guys got into identical hot air balloons. They took their secondaries too, because every every good duel has got to have a backup guy to to just be like. Did you know, nobody height- tell them this is a bad fucking idea at this point? It, like, I'm look, sorry, gentlemen, Joe, I, I'm pro duel here, but what what part of a duel is a good idea? 
Uh, all right. First of all, uh, I don't know. But <laughs> if I'm the second, if I like, if if one of you guys did something so fucking stupid that like the weird Texan from The Simpsons wants to duel you, I'd be your second. But the second you're like, okay, we have to be on a hot fucking air balloons or whatever. I'm like, all right, I'm checking out. We're going to fly airplanes into each other. <laughs> somehow, somehow this is going to prove that I deserve to get pussy more than the other guy. I, I have an idea for a duel. One of you is going to be in a building. <laughs> <laughs> the north or the south building i won't know which one <laughs> the other one of you is gonna acquire a large plane <laughs> it's uh, fine jet fuel can't melt steel beams so it's fine they can they, they can melt fucking flesh francis <laughs> so may 3rd 1808 these two motherfuckers get into their balloons with their with their secondaries and fly on up to about 2000 feet or so uh there were definitely spectators who were who were watching and everything because they're they they thought that they were watching a balloon race so they're like yay go go do a balloon race we love to watch balloon races so they rose (laughs) they rose up they got about a half mile up they're about 80 yards apart or so and then there was a signal from below to say that the duel is officially on so the peak got the first shot uh but somehow he missed a fucking balloon he had a blunderbuss. He missed. He missed the balloon. Um, That's like, I don't know, missing a target with an M9 while at qualification. Look, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> 25 yards is further than you think when you're shooting a pistol, all right? I've done it. It's not that far. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... To peak, you know, he misses, but uh, so yeah, so this is basically the duel between me and Joe because uh, Joe is the other guy and he did not miss at all. Uh, he <laughs> Wait, hit did the he balloon. shoot the guy? Did he hit the balloon with the blunderbuss? Oh, yeah, they were shooting each other's balloons. Oh my, how did he miss the whole ass balloon? I don't know. I don't know did what 1808 oh, wait, balloons uh, look oh, wait, like. So Maybe wait. they were smaller. Wait, were they only trying to shoot the balloon? Yes, the whole idea okay. was to fly up really high and shoot each other out of the air. Okay. Yeah, they were. <laughs> How is so, this a jackass uh, fucking that? Like, I know we've already made a jackass joke, but this is seriously <laughs> something that would come out of a writer's room. Yeah. So um, the peak's balloon completely collapsed uh, and it descended, quote, fearfully with fearful rapidity, uh, which means it fell like a fucking lead balloon and killed everybody in, in the, uh, the thing. Yeah, uh, it came down like a fucking meteor. Yeah. Yeah. And killed him. So, you know, I mean, balloon duels. I mean, it's kind of like, you know. I feel like to do it nowadays, you'd have to do it in a helicopter because it's the same combination of like really good at staying in the air until it isn't. Uh, and helicopter then you don't, and you are both door gunners. Yeah, like you, you don't really uh, you don't really glide to the earth after uh, after you, when you start falling. You just kind of in a helicopter. It. You do. Uh, it depends if you blow that. it. Well, I look. I I took helicopter flying lessons, and one thing that they uh, that the guy showed me was that like if you lose all power in a helicopter, like. Uh, the when it you, you'll land hard but like as long as the rotors are still like intact um the the falling the updraft will keep the rotors moving so that it's a it's a hard landing but it's not a deadly landing now if you get hit with a javelin while you're in a helicopter you're fucked but if a helicopter just like runs out of gas up there you're gonna be okay doesn't work the same with balloons okay hear me out Duels should be illegal again, but they could only occur in hot uh, hot air balloons. Absolutely, I well, think I, that every like, balloon race should be like really yeah. lo- like kitchen knives taped onto really lo- long sticks. Give them pikes. Let's bring back the pike for balloon yeah. fights. Well, let's uh, let's bring multiple multiple centuries of weaponry into this. Hell yeah! No, so this is a, like I and I think I, I I mentioned this to you both before, but this is like one hundred percent a scene in a movie uh, where like two race car drivers do this or two pilots. I don't know. This is just the the Fast and the Furious Eleven. It's an uh, it's a, it's like in this old like fucking uh, like ensemble comedy called uh, The Magnificent Men and Their Flying Machines. I think is the one. Nothing's more important than going ballooning with family. And they like you know one of them like you know shoots the balloon and it's like a German dude and a French dude. And every time they fire, the balloon goes like back further and further. And then eventually one of them, they I think like the balloon like collapses and like. Like ye old sewage pond, if I remember correctly. This sounds like this sounds like a silent film that's only like a uh, uh, music is is a player piano. I mean, it's not that far off. It's like one of those weird like fifties movies where it has like you know a, it's like a cast with like thirty different bit actors. All right, you guys ready for the other French the other French duel I have for you? 
It's going to be hard to top a fucking balloon. It's, this one's also really fucking stupid, but not as involved. So 1843, two men la- named Lenfont and Melfont got into an argument. Uh, Is it over their decided, names? Yeah, Lenfont and Melfont. It's the French, man. I don't know. They, they, they're not very imaginative back then, I suppose. There's only so many ways that you can eat a baguette. Uh, so they had a they had an argument, and they decided the only way to settle the argument was with a duel. But they didn't really have guns, and they were in like a a pub or bar or something. Basically, there's a pool table, and so they're like, "We're gonna duel with billiard balls." What? Uh, yeah, they're gonna throw balls at each other. They're gonna throw <laughs> balls at each other's faces. <laughs> so they took this their- is like the most painful. Uh, uh- duel ever because at least everybody else like oh i've been shot or oh i'm plummeting to earth in a in a in a fucking dying hot air balloon but this is like you're just gonna get brained with a cue ball yeah so they went that 12 paces apart uh they agreed to stand still while taking turns throwing balls at each other <laughs> <laughs> they drew straws for the right to throw first and Melfont won and apparently he said i'm going to kill you with the first throw and then proceeded to kill him with one throw what the fuck he threw it so hard he hit the other guy in the forehead and instantly killed him someone some mlb scout needs to fucking get a hold of that guy (laughs) (laughs) well i mean it's like it's like uh every time that you know someone's like oh i I could definitely like uh you know hit a fastball from like a major league pitcher it's like no you'd just be dead like you would just like (laughs) you would just get in the way of the fastball and it would like somehow like strike you with the skull and shatter into 30 pieces and And, you know i've seen people like in in baseball get hit with with uh with the ball uh i've seen people like get hit in the head with stuff and just like is the is like the 18th century french skull just very soft like did they just not have enough calcium that like a billiard ball at 12 paces this is this is a good chunk of space and somebody just hucked a ball and killed somebody. Maybe, maybe he just got a good fucking arm. I mean, there's there's endless amounts of stories of someone throwing a punch and accidentally killing a guy. Uh, like, you you hit someone in the right spot, uh, they're going down, man. Like, your, your brain isn't that uh, resilient to injury uh, and especially injury resulting in death and, you know, has, has significantly less to do with... Uh, the the thickness of his brain pan <laughs> that it does uh, getting a cue ball winged at his skull by someone who apparently has been practicing. Yeah, I want to know this guy who's just, who who has been spending his time like in the back. You know, it's like it's somebody who spends all of their time at like one of those axe throwing bars, and then you challenge them to a duel, and he's just like, "Cool, axe throwing. That's what we're gonna do." And you're like, "Fuck, fuck." Like I'm gonna say, I still feel confident in beating that guy. Have you ever met anybody that goes to to the axe throwing bars? No, I'm not gonna be worried about from people like that. Um, I, 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 they planned it ahead of time, and this guy had like a fucking rocky training montage where he's just side arming cue balls at something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I got another one for you guys. Um, a duel with a dog. So we're going back what? to okay. The dog wasn't wrong here. I hope he wins. Uh, well, don't worry. So. Uh, this is uh, another uh, another French duel. The French, man, they just love fucking killing people. How mad uh, are you at a dog or you challenge it to a duel? Oh, the dog challenged the man to a duel. All right. What? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let me tell this fucking story. I'm so, not high enough for this. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chevalier Macquire killed uh, a man named Aubrey de Montedirier. Um, in the forest of Bondi near Paris. Um, I don't didn't pronounce any of that right. Doesn't matter. So no, it was all 100 percent correct. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm sure all of our, our French listeners are just nodding their heads in agreement. So uh, Macar thought that uh, he would get away uh, because it's, you know, the 1400s. Um, pretty much you could murder anybody. And as long as nobody saw you, it was fine. The only person that saw him was the guy's dog. Uh, so he, you know, killed the guy. <laughs> Dragged him off into the woods, buried him. It was like, cool, done. Uh, dog went back to into town and uh, found a friend of his master's and started scratching at the door and everything is like, and the guy's just like, whoa, what the fuck? It's my buddy's dog. And the greyhound, it's a greyhound, takes him back out there and is just like, you know, it's like they're scratching at the ground. And so they dig it up and it's like, holy shit, your guy here is dead. Um what what <laughs> so the dog Your dogs just take my gun seek vengeance well so they, what they, they call this a reverse john wick actually like, <laughs> <laughs> 
So the uh, the guy who the dog came to uh, starts he's just like, well, okay, yeah, we d- take care of the body and everything, bury it. He just starts taking care of the dog. The dog runs into the guy again, uh, the guy who murdered um, his master, and just starts attacking the shit out of this dog, uh, out of this guy constantly. So, <laughs> uh, and, and they were just like, you know, there was it drew suspicion from the dog's new owner that's just like, hey, I think this guy probably had something to do with this so the king uh <laughs> the king i just like i just want to stop it i just like love like ye old timey like murder shit <laughs> it just like uh well you know i mean he was cackling and uh wiping you know a bloody knife on his shirt uh I think he might have something to do with this. We should, uh, what really sold me on it is he kept twirling his mustache at yeah, me. Like, it's like, man, I, I mean, uh, you know, the guys with monocles in this town just will not stop committing murders. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck it is. I think a, I think a good bit would be to do like a um, uh, my favorite murder kind of like true crime podcast. But like you're just trying to solve murders from like the 1400s and shit. It's like then they found him in a bog. Nobody knew what happened. Or it's like, you know, bog. like, you know, like he was last seen in the company of a stranger. And then like, you know, the same stranger turned up in the next town over, but with a mustache and we didn't recognize him. Like exactly. he went by the name Johnny murders a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny murder some. <laughs> so uh, the. King, you know, again, there's no Netflix. So what the fuck else has a king got to do? Decided that obviously this dog is challenging this man to a duel. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God for God's sovereign on earth, right? Like, <laughs> who else could possibly define what this could mean? I mean, the funnier thing about, I mean, at least like, you know, like France and other countries have like, you know, have instituted civil law since then. And it's kind of like broken up. Meanwhile, us dumb motherfuckers, everything comes from English common law. So like, all of this sort of shit is like the base, like the foundation on which our current system of law is built. So Imagine time you like, see like Emmanuel Macron, like, hmm, I think that dog is just trying to duel that. <laughs> well, just like, uh, you know, as long as it's not Mayor Pete. <laughs> well, just you know, like you know, just like digging out, like a. Well, you see, it's uh, it's actually okay that uh, you know, um, you know, this guy strapped an AR-15 to his dog and let it like wander around <laughs> the fucking neighborhood. And I think, uh, MIT, I think MIT's MIT's doing that, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, pretty, you know, like. Because as you see, according to this like eighteen sixty or like sixteen sixty eight court case, and uh, you know, like uh, you know, uh, hi Justice well, Thomas, chill out, <laughs> go fuck, in, in a, go fuck yourself, Shire. Like you know, the, someone strapped the fucking blunderbuss to their you know their pit bull, and like as a result, <laughs> uh, you know, we, it's the right to arm dogs. Yeah, in, in a five four vote, the Supreme Court has decided it is unconstitutional to force dogs to duel for you. Thomas writes in dissent. <laughs> no, in, a fi- in a five four decision, the Supreme Court has uh, ruled that it's illegal not to give your dog a gun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the right to bear arms means all Americans, and dogs are now officially Americans. Yeah. Hell, I'm going to do so much voter fraud with my dogs. <laughs> 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 so um, they armed McCure with a lance, and uh, they just... <laughs> They just let the Greyhound just be a dog. And <laughs> this is unfair. <laughs> you got to give him, attach razor blades to his face or something. <laughs> oh, bro, the dog won. Like, <laughs> I mean, it was a Greyhound with a fucking lance attached to it. Like, No, they didn't give the dog a lance. They gave the guy a lance. Oh, they gave the Every guy time a lance. The, the, it was a dog that would have barked to be shot out of its mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of Mr. Burt's guards dogs. Yeah. So the Greyhound came to the fight with his natural built in weapons in its teeth. Uh, it sprang onto the man with amazing ferocity and clamped its teeth around his throat and couldn't be shaken off. Uh, the guy screamed that he would confess if they pulled the dog off. So, uh, as far as the trial by combat was concerned, open and shut case, and they, they hanged him for his crime, which, like, <laughs> This, wait, I does that mean like, the dog's a lawyer if this is trial by combat? In 1400 Paris, yes, actually. That's <laughs> legally, <laughs> legally a law dog. Um, I mean, this I is mean, where, this where, law, this is where the term law dog comes from. Uh, which means I only believe in law that can be practiced physically by dogs. I mean, you All know, right. I back it. <laughs> it has history in our society. All right. Which means legally, I could shit on the sidewalk. So uh, I think we got time for one more. Um, let's go to England this time. Let's go to. Uh, <laughs> Do we the- have to? <laughs> <laughs> 
this is this one is referred to as the duel of the dwarf um a uh, a we're, and this is 16 early 1600s england so 16 19 16 20 or so um they uh the, the jeffrey hudson was the court dwarf of uh henrietta um maria uh, i'm sorry this is another french one i'm sorry there's a lot of going back and forth between France and England, but yeah, I'm uh, sure you're going to pronounce it flawlessly. Don't listen to the haters. Also, Henrietta yeah, Maria, I love a man with a good government job like court dwarf. <laughs> well, he just kind of showed up one day, and everybody was like, "He's funny looking." He I, and the queen's just like, "He's in my entourage now. I need a little guy." Um, <laughs> All right, we we stand a short king. Exactly. So uh, what he ended up doing is uh, he obviously uh, was not like. You know, there's only so many things that a dwarf can do to survive in 1600s. Um, one of them is there's I only guess, so many court dwarf positions going around, man. It's a dog eat dog world out there. Then you have to, <laughs> then you have to, then you have to duel the dog. Yeah, you got to fight the dog to get the uh, the court uh, appointed thing here. So uh, the the queen referred to him as Lord Minimus, um, and actually put him in charge of stuff. It, she made him she made him a captain in the army, uh, where. <laughs> He was the butt of jokes, but he was also like, he's like, no, I'm, I'm in the army now. So like, you have to listen to me. And everybody's like, bitch and PT test. Nobody can fucking touch him. Well, (laughs) you know, everything in the PT test goes by height. So, you know, it's uh, (laughs) kind of worked out in his favor. So, uh, the, he challenged a, uh, a guy to a, um, uh, to a duel. Uh, and he was actually, he was like another one of the people in the military. And so, Jeffrey was just like, no, fuck you. Uh, no, there's no record of what the actual insult was because everybody kind of insulted him. But I guess this is one of those uh, straw that broke the camel's back kind of things. I mean, he's um, a he's a, 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 a guy with this medical condition in the 1600s. This guy has the thickest skin imaginable. Yeah. Like he's a, his official job was court dwarf. So whoever finally said the thing that tipped him over the edge had to really bring the fire. Yeah. <laughs> so he well, ends up like, uh, his official title is Captain Minimus. Like, you know, I mean, my <laughs> my man is probably like a seething ball of rage for like a <laughs> pretty significant amount of time. Again, everybody is just very like angry and full of lead. Um, not from dueling, just from eating and drinking. And also just I'm so mad I'm so many internal parasites right now. <laughs> this is also just so many fucking worms and they're all mad at you too. This is also just the British House of Lords in like the 1970s. This is still the British House of Lords. They're still full of internal parasites. I mean, this is also probably just the Senate at this point. Like, yeah, it's you know, true. just it's like true. full of lead and internal parasites. Like really, like well, it's just, like, that's just Diane Feinstein. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, he challenges one of the other lords to this duel, um, and the other guy thought it was a joke and showed up with like a 1600s water pistol. Um, unfortunately Wait, for him, what? they had super up, soakers back then. I guess. Um, unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, uh, Jeffrey showed up with an actual gun and shot the motherfucker. Um, <laughs> the, problem, <laughs> big, the biggest problem was that like he he like killed like the queen's like master of horse and. Like she, he didn't kill just like another dipshit that she was just like, yeah, he's in my entourage. She like, he killed somebody that was like very, um, you know, important. So, uh, he had to run, uh, after that he was sentenced to death. Uh, but Henrietta, Queen Henrietta ended up interceding to save his life and sent him back to England. Um, when he was sent back to England, uh, he was actually, his, his ship was raided by, uh, Barbary pirates and he spent, uh, 25 years in slavery after that, uh, oh, to which he grew, somehow he grew 30 inches. Um, wait, what? He, that doesn't yeah. make a lot of sense. Well, was he like, it was he like, was he like a 12 year old? Like when he was in, like, well, was he like not a, really a small guy? He was yeah, just a was, child. Yeah. He was just like. Oh Just yeah, a like, weird looking kid. It was like one of those things, like kind of like how everyone in like the 1970s who like in their 30s now looks like people now in their 50s. Like you know, he was just yeah. like doing enough, like you know, ingesting enough laudanum that he would like look like he was a lot fucking older than he actually was. It's uh, one of those old timey Victorian wasting conditions. That all he needed was some fresh air, and he magically grew three feet. <laughs> he just like needed to eat a, he needed to eat a single vegetable. Uh, <laughs> like just like literally literally any vegetable it was just like he, he, drank, just, a gl- he drank a glass of milk and all of his bones knitted back together <laughs> yeah, he he was following that jordan peterson all meat diet yeah like <laughs> he had a single glass of water that didn't have a like a fucking terrible tapeworm in it and he like managed to like you know 
regenerate. Well, and here's the thing. So, it's, wait, are it's we a, sure this is the same guy? Like, was this just like, no, I'm totally uh, minimus. Like, my no, man, you were six feet tall. No, it, was it says like a, no details of his captivity were recorded except for one fact, which is he claimed to have grown 45 inches during this time, doubling his height after the age of 30, which he attributed to the buggery he regularly suffered at the hands of his captors. He got fucked so hard he grew three feet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Man, that's a different kind of dick. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, talk about but, talk about being a shorty. Uh, <laughs> like, I cannot, I, I cannot imagine uh, having sex so good I become eight feet tall. <laughs> well, though, once again, it was like as you were talking about earlier, it was definitely just some other dude who it was like, definitely another guy who, who yeah. just like murdered someone, moved the next town over. It was like, oh, I'm the small guy, and I I grew several inches. I'm definitely not the guy who didn't have a mustache and was. Uh, you know, like rob this other dude and stabbed him to death. I'm pretty sure. Like, let's follow Occam's razor here. What's the simplest explanation? And that is the dude busted so hard he grew three feet. <laughs> <laughs> Again, maybe there's some. Maybe he got a protein injection and uh, suddenly his his body caught up with the rest of him. His his fucking spine was kinked up, but he blew so hard it straightened it out. Oh, apparently the uh, squirt gun was just like a, a big syringe. That's actually how they cure scoliosis uh, pre uh, pre twentieth century. Yeah, it's just like a hysteria where they just uh, jerk yeah. off. But it's yeah, like, just, ah, you have a curve in your spine. I have just the thing for that buggery. <laughs> have you? I, I'm writing you a prescription. It just says butt fucking. <laughs> Wait, am I giving or receiving? Yes. <laughs> Good news. We yeah, suggest we, we, both. We don't. We don't. We don't kink shame here. Uh, it's really, uh, you know, whatever works for you. Uh, you know, find your own power dynamic. You know, just get out. Anyway, it. since this is the 1800s and things have to be disgusting, here's a tub of lard to use as lube. <laughs> oh no, it's the 1600s. So you're just using sweat and tears. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> just, just I brought the finest mud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't worry, we made a fine stew. Just splash <laughs> some salt water on your dick, and you're good to go. Ugh. All right, I think I think that's enough of all that. <laughs> gentlemen, thank you for coming on. I don't, uh, know, I don't know if you can call us gentlemen after ending on that note. Uh, <laughs> remember, kind listeners, are you short? Do you want to get taller? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Ben Shapiro, are you we've got butt fucking. <laughs> Ben Shapiro, get at me. Not not me specifically, but I'm sure I can introduce you to some people. Uh, star-crossed lovers. Yeah, and uh, and Joe Rogan too. While we're at it, you know. Yeah. And uh, was it Dave Portnoy? Just uh, all the short kinks out there. Uh, all the yeah, short like kinks Dave, out there. Dave Portnoy has showed everybody if you if you don't come, you just turn orange. <laughs> that man Dave Portnoy looks like he's about to like spontaneously combust in every picture he's that I've seen cocaine him personified <laughs> even when I saw him in, in real life at an airport with like not having to like be on for a camera he just looked like a nervous ball of like he's just about to like not explode like angrily like just literally explode like pieces of him all over the place <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for uh, coming on to talk about dueling. I hope everybody, if you didn't learn something, then maybe you were at least uh, entertained. Um, don't get in a balloon to fight. Don't do balloon fights, I think is going to be our number one thing here. I, I'm Look, I'm writing in dissent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, look, if you want to fight in a balloon, we can do balloon fights. You and me. All right. Let's I mean, do it. Once again, new, I think, new uh, fucking Patreon goal. Uh, once we hit it, one of us dies. I was gonna say. I mean, we keep uh, we keep finding good new uh, ideas for a future live show. Uh, so at some point, we're just gonna have to like, you know, what do you people want to see? Do you want to see Bunker in Albania? Do you want to see Balloon Fight? Uh, yeah, you know, the, the first hell of a way live show is uh, all four of us in balloons mm -hmm. recording at each other while shooting randomly at each other's balloons. I mean, actually, that would be weirdly on brand. Yeah, very um, on brand. And we'd yeah, only have to organize one live show ever after that because uh, <laughs> the, the, the prison the prison sentence is going to be steep. Yeah. <laughs> well, not if we do it. See, we just have to do it somewhere where it's okay to do something like that. Like, I don't think that's anywhere. I've heard there's an island. Uh, <laughs> we're going to make an island in the middle of the Mississippi River. No, I think there's an island that recently freed up. Uh, <laughs> well, St. James. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna meet at the little St. James Island and uh shoot each other with balloons. <laughs> meet me above uh Jeffrey Epstein's weird fuck temple. And, and then we're uh, all gonna get well, then we're all gonna get taller together. <laughs> <laughs> 
talk to y'all next week. Zoom.